This episode is brought to you by Workbox. Getting ready to make a difference. All right, so coming up, I'm about to chat to uh, one of my favorite film directors at the moment. Uh, this guy directed Jovicho. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's absolutely amazing. So, uh, yeah, that's coming up. But before that, i got to say a big shout out to all our newest members. If you want to become a member of the channel, just click the join button. But a big shout out to Ayanda, Sanele, Karabo, uh, Tario. Is this Tario? I think it's Tario. Onkemete, Wibilo, Sharon. Matla King, Princess Mweti, Masillo, Emmanuel Madi, Nontobe Eko, Katlejo, Ndi, Tabang, Kloti, Sydney, Krimo, Musa, Zusake, Kororo, Brain B, uh, Isai U. <laughs> I think that's how you pronounce it. And Kwa, Kwa, Wele Sizwe, Lusu Zuko, Miss Mabote, uh, Ta, talu kanyo. Uh, sorry for butchering everybody's names, but a big shout out to all our newest members. Uh, like I said, if you want to join and be a member, just click the join button. Uh, you can get early access to um, some of the interviews we do, uh, discount and merchandising, shout outs, like I just did now. Uh, also, what else did I need to say? Am I forgetting something? Mm. Oh, yeah. Don't forget to subscribe. Yes, click that subscribe button. About to reach uh, 35,000, road to 35K. Smash the like button, click subscribe. It is Podcast and Chill. Podcast and Chill. Matt G, the ghost lady, and Len Moleko. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Podcast and Chill. And today I am chilling with a multi award winning filmmaker. Mr. Vincent Muloy, how are you, sir? I'm so good, G. and how are you? Uh, it's such an honor to chat to you. We'll get to that in a short while, but I'm glad that you decided to stick to TV than becoming a radio DJ. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still going to do it. I'm still going to do it. Listen, when I'm 70 years old, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wobble into that studio and say, can you give me the mic? I want to be here. Hopefully my name would be so big by then that every station manager would want to have me on. Just out of curiosity, what show did you want to do and which station did you want to work at? It was, uh, at the time, I think it was called uh, uh, Radio Sesotho, uh, which is now the city FM. Mm. I, I actually used to sit outside the stoop of my house and I could mimic these guys the whole day, man. I, I actually still love radio, yeah. Yeah. And I, I actually think you were very bloody good at it as well. You know, you still are. Thank you. And I, people went ready. Like, I'm, I'm not saying this to make you feel good, but people went ready for you. <laughs> You're also too much of a bad boy, you know? You're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but listen, we, we, we miss your voice on radio because it's, you know, uh, I don't want to criticize people, but... The reality is that, you know, a lot of youth radio is so dry without people like you, man. Yeah. Uh, and young people are usually energetic, revolutionary, and we need that. So, and it needs to come from a place of genuine authenticity. And a lot of it that we see, and it's similarly to TV, a lot of what we see these days is just like, it's superficial. And, yeah. uh, and you know, the audience, the listeners feel it when it's like that. And, I, you know, you, you had that naughty thing about you that, that people felt like was genuine. And, and I enjoyed it, you know? 
Uh, enough about me. This is all about you. And um, you know what happened? Let me just tell you why I wanted to do this interview. So I'm on Netflix and I'm like, okay, during lockdown, I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, what to watch? I've done Tiger King. I've done all these things. Then I come across Jovijo. I'm like, wow, mm. okay, this looks local. No, this has to be local. Fuck, this is dope. Okay, cool. Then I start yeah. see, watching it. And the first 10 minutes, like, I don't know what you were doing, the cinematography, like, it reminded me of the first time I saw Yizo Yizo, you know? And yeah, yeah. Uh, I ended up watching the whole series from um, episode yeah. one. Yeah, I binge watched it the whole night. And then I'm like, I have to talk to this guy. I have to get in his mind. What was he thinking when he came up with this? Because it is fucking amazing, dude. It is brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. I had to go crazy a bit to, 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 to make that thing, you know? And I had to get a lot of crazy people to, to buy into my idea. Um, but, you know, it was all memory. It's stuff that I remember from childhood uh, in Soweto when um, uh, I remember how I saw Pansula dancers. The first time that I really take great note of them was when we were watching a soccer team. And it was actually a school competition two rivalry uh, schools were playing against each other. And there's this one kid who just went into the field and started dancing and was mm. dancing skanda, which is another form or subgenre of Spanzula. And the whole uh, game stopped. And mm. for five to 10 minutes, they were just watching this boy. Wow. And I was like, damn, man, this boy has so much power to make all these people stop playing soccer and just watch it. But I wasn't seeing that stuff on TV. I was like, why are we not seeing this on TV? It doesn't make sense. Back then, I didn't know I was going to be a filmmaker. So, you know, as you get older and older, and you, you know, you realize that, you know, TV is boring. What can we put on TV that's original and authentic? And I went back into my childhood archive, and this is one of the shows that I came up with. Um, but I wouldn't have done that, of course, without people who are co-creators, uh, my partner, Lodi Matsitela, and back then, Malkhano Mambabulo, uh, were crazy enough to join me on this, on this journey. They were like, yo, man, we feel you, and we're going to go with you. Take me back to the first time you started having, like when the concept started registering in your head, like when you started writing it, what was happening? Where were you? What was going on? So, you know, the funny thing, Thing is you never actually are able to pinpoint one moment and I'll tell you about my process is that things get into my head and then they leave they like flashes and they keep coming they keep coming until you take note of them and then you're like okay uh, maybe this thing keeps coming uh, I think I remember it vaguely uh, and then you're like okay let me pay attention to it but by the time you pay attention to it there's been so many moments of it that has happened that you don't remember the precise moment. But I'll tell you about one of the key moments. It's when I was driving home to Soweto. I was working in Bramfontein at the time. And I was driving home and I saw these houses and, and I, I just drove into the squatter camp and I was like, God damn it, I have to shoot something here. Mm -hmm. and, and as I was driving out and I was like, fuck, it has to be that Jovijo Panzula thing that I need to shoot here. And from then on, I never stopped thinking about it. So every incident, every scene, every event, every character I come across, every conversation I overhear, every style I see, every fashion I see, we're all a buildup of what this is gonna be. And I mean, you, you talking about the first 10 minutes of that movie, you know, and the first eight minutes, it's, it's just one scene, really. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's something that hasn't happened in, in South African TV where you got on TV for a 24 minutes show, <laughs> you've got eight minutes of just one scene. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I remember when, when, I, when, when, I, when I was showing it to the broadcaster, they were like, what is this? What, it's boring. <laughs> Nothing happens yet. Why are we watching this thing? <laughs> Like, look at your guy. He's just walking inside. He's just looking at these people. And they were like, you got to change it. You got to take it off, put it at the end. I was like, no, no, this is it. This is it. Because to me, story and action is not always in the dialogue 
or in the physical action. Sometimes it's in the feeling and it felt good when you watch a character, my Fred characters, which is played by Warren, when he was walking through his team, inspecting them, the interaction he has with them. They are just stories, man. They're just mm. like stories. I mean, I could watch that shit forever. I was just like, even I, I was like, what the fuck? Because that scene actually, Mac G, was mm. meant to be about 40 seconds. Mm. In a script, that scene was about 40 seconds. Yeah. It just said, Warren opens up a show with a praise poem uh, addressed to his uh, Pantula dancers' troops. That's all. Mm. And a night before we shot it, of course, I think about this thing. I was like, fuck that shit. I'm going to write <laughs> this thing. <laughs> I'm going to write what I want. Remember, you must understand what your video is. Chovicho is a reflection of what most of us are feeling and wanting to say. Mm. But we have to say it poetically so that we don't get into trouble. Uh, because I'm also not as such an articulate person. I have to do it using my art. Mm. And my art is feeling. And feeling has to be poetry. And I was like, I'm going to write this monologue. Mm. And at one o'clock at night when I finished writing it, I called Warren. Luckily, he was still awake. Uh, I don't know if he was awake because we were shooting, and which meant he needs to leave house at five o'clock in the morning mm. and be on set at six. And I called him. I was like, yo, man, I'm going to send you this thing that I've just told. This is what you need to say uh, to your troops. He was like, okay, send it. I send it. Uh, in the morning, he read it, and he was like, I, you know, Mavi, I couldn't sleep last night when I was reading this thing. And it's so powerful. Yeah. And when he played it, I don't know what he was thinking. Yeah. I don't know yeah. what planet F he was on. Oof. It's just like, it's a confusion. It's like, what, what is this man doing? Like, he just like, he fucked that shit up. Hey, bad. dude. Dude. And after that, after that, we knew that, shit, we've got something amazing here. Yeah. I mean, we've always known that we're going to cause shit. Was that but the first we, scene yeah. you shot? Say that again? Was that the first scene you shot? No, it wasn't the first scene. Uh, but it was uh, the end of the week scene. Mm. Mm. Uh, and we were like, yeah, no, uh, no, we've got something here. We've got something. And when we got into the edit, um, the guy, I just told the editor, just cut. Don't, don't look at the time. Just wow. cut. No matter how long it takes. And you must understand, TV uh, format is very rigid. They're like, the first one minute or one minute and a half, it's your intro and the premise, and then we're going to go to your logo uh, and the steam, and then we're going to go to uh, adverts, mm. and then with the climax. And we're going to hook people so that they can come back after the advert and watch that thing. And when we did that thing, we were like, no, we're not going to cut this thing. Uh, just let it slide. So they had to play adverts before the show begins. And then the <laughs> adverts... <laughs> That's crazy, man. So you know what's the beautiful, about, the beautiful thing about it, Meg G, is because this was not a commission project. It was, a, you know, it was self-funded. We licensed it to the SABC. So we had a little bit more say in how it looks and how it's packaged than you'd usually get when you just get a commission from the broadcast. Luckily, we had an amazing uh, commissioning editor. He was like, yo, I don't know what this thing is, but it's dope. I'm going to try and fight for you guys. And he did, Chet. He mm -hmm. tried. But his bosses, you know, it actually ended up, his bosses weren't talking to him anymore. They were calling us directly. Like, you got to change this. This is not going to work. <laughs> we're like, uh, we, we like it this way. Yeah. And they were like, no, but you have to change it. But, well, sorry, we, uh, we think it's dope. And, and, and luckily, you know, they were, they were kind enough to allow us to, to put it on TV like that. But and what, what's, which, what's, which, what's going through your head, man? Because from one creator to another, uh, did you ever second guess yourself? Like I'm talking about, you've got this crazy idea in your head. No one can see it yet. But you know that this is the shit. 
you know, but people are commissioning the editor, like you're saying, you're saying, no, take this out. Yeah. This is not going to work. No, this is too long. This is not, you're not doing TV. How do you stay rigid to your plan and what you want to do and your vision? How do you stay true to it? I think I lost, I think I lost my mind a bit. <laughs> yeah, I think I lost my mind when I was doing Joe Vichu because I didn't care. Mm. I was just like, I, I shared myself before we started shooting. I pissed my pants before we started shooting. And once we started shooting, it didn't matter. I done, I've wasted all my trousers, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. Like, I was like, ah, no, okay. They're all messed up. Now I'm ready to go. So by the time we get to the talking to commissioning editors, you, you like so rigid and you, um, you, the conviction is so deep that you feel like you're not yourself. And you also have a partner who actually believes in that. So you're not, you don't, you're not alone. So you go, you go, go, he goes, yeah, let's go. And you go, yeah, let's go. So you are almost like possessed, but you, this is so key to all creative. Once you have that conviction and the belief, the deep belief, almost ancestral, <laughs> and there's nothing that you can't move because your belief translates into the product. And even the people who don't believe in it will be hit by the energy and the chemistry of it. Because I, I am a firm believer that it's not just about the methodologies, it's not about the mechanism, it's also about the science of emotions that goes into the actual product. And I know this sounds confusing, and uh, some people might be like, Mommy, Vincent is talking juju stuff. <laughs> uh, no, this, <laughs> this science is real is that once you have that conviction, and that conviction is like an atomic ball, and it's bottled, and you hold on to it, if you can carry that on, and then let it spread into your product, the people on the other side will feel that, even when they get confused and can't relate to the product, but the energy and the chemistry of it is gonna be so powerful, it's mm, 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 mm. And you're so right, man. Let's talk about the casting because, I mean, first of all, Warren, Warren killed that part. Everything that you just yes. said that he resembled it within, you know, the, 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 the series. And yeah. then when you look at the other cast as well, I can't see them doing anything else. I actually thought they are Pantula dancers. Like, I actually think they live <laughs> with Vicho to this day. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's actually a very good point uh, because we um, believe um, that the process is just as important as the product. So the process of casting was so key that we had to look for people who have the attitude, who have um, the empathy and the sympathy and who've been through life, who understand life, and who are not just trying to be stars, but who've seen these things and can draw from those experiences. It wasn't just about their talent and who they are. We weren't looking for stars. We're looking for people who could carry the energy of the people we're trying to reflect and portray on screen. So uh, it was a very carefully done uh, process of picking. We didn't do audition. We literally picked people and, and even people we meet up in dance competition uh, and people that we've seen on TV, people I've worked with. And, you know, even with Warren, they, I'll tell you another interesting story, uh, which might, might feel like I, I, I digress, but it's actually related, is um, this show, we pitched it for four years and no one wanted it. All channels, all broadcasters was like, what the fuck is this? Because we shot a pilot for it. But before we shot a pilot for it, I had known Warren for some time and he was still at school at that time. And he kept saying, yo, Mavi, you know I'm an actor. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He says, you put me in, man, put me in. I was like, yeah, time will come, time will come. And time never really came. But when time came, 
and we did the pilot and I was like, wow, this was a product for the guy. But this, this is just like years and years. I think about three years of him saying, yo, put me on. I'm ready for you. I want to be in this thing and I want to be in this thing. And by the time we did the, pro, uh, the, the pilot, I was like, this guy's a star. And, you know, this is the ups and downs of this industry. And then now we had to go and pitch this thing. But all broadcasters were like, no, no, this thing is not going to work. I mean, they, you know, they've got a ticky box, right? Yeah. They're like, hey, plus you don't have a yellow bone in your show. <laughs> <laughs> and your lead is not a Zulu speaking. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, you know, what's their Twitter follower? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> how are they looking on Instagram? So we didn't have any of those stuff. And they were like, no, it's not going to work. But most importantly, and really sad is the fact that they were like but listen spantula is there why do you want to do something on spantula that 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 genre is there there are no mm. people doing this thing but i'm on the ground yo and yeah. i see this thing i was like yo underground this thing is huge i see people everywhere across the country that are still dancing this thing and you know fast forward to four years later when it hit the television screen and it broke South African uh, television records, ever. There is no drama show that has hit the ARs that we have hit in the history of South African television, despite the fact that people had more options of watching other things than before. I mean, we've got more than 50, 100 channels on TV. We've got YouTube, we've got this and that. There's gigs that are happening all the time, but we managed to, to break the record and set a new record, which was amazing. But, you know, to me, it was like, it was a lesson. It was like, when you believe in something, you have to see it through, despite mm. what people say, because you might not know what you have in your hand. Wow. Uh, and now, you know, three years later, after it has played on TV, Netflix was like, we want that thing. What is that thing? Mm. We want that thing on our channel. <laughs> and we got on that thing. And even there, um, we were just on Netflix. A day later, we were trending. And another day later, two days later, we were one of the, mo of the favorite popular shows on Netflix. Wow. We were like, oh, wow. And four days, five days later, when we thought it was over, we had another wave of trending. And we were like, where are these people coming from? We thought we finished, it, we finished them off. On, on, on the broadcast that South yeah. African saw it. And now where are these people? Luckily, we've got people like you, you know, who never saw it on TV and yeah. bumped into it. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know when- and you know what? I'm so glad you liked it because a lot of people on TV, they were actually complaining about it. They're like, yeah, but that thing, we don't understand what's happening. There's no story there. I was like, what, what the heck is happening? And you know, I sympathize with them because somehow I actually believe in what they are saying, they are mm. right. Mm. When you are used to traditional convention, uh, convention of story narrative, girl meets boy, they fall in love, something happens, and now the boy has to fight for a girl. That's how we are used to watching uh, television. So mm. you wanna know that the boy is fighting for the girl. And if the boy doesn't fight for the girl, something is gonna happen for a girl. So if somebody comes up with something totally different and new and that demands you as a viewer and a participant to be a participant, we're not now feeding you stuff. We are asking you to participate and figure shit out. It is a bit hard, I must admit, because yeah. it's a new way of storytelling and, it, and it's uncomfortable because it's awkward. You can't predict, you can't tell the timeline where it's going to end up because we are used to measuring and uh, we are used to predicting where it's going. And if you can't, all of a sudden that system is not there. It's very confusing and you hate it. Uh, and you're like, oh, how not story. But in actual fact, you know, it's, you, Jovicho is like going into an art museum, man. Yeah. It's, you know, you have to participate and, and find your story in, in the exhibition.
you know. So w- when you win Safters and now Netflix comes calling, do you feel vindicated? You know, I mean, I suppose you could say vindicated, which is the simplest way of putting it. Um, but no, uh, I don't feel vindicated. I think it's a process that we are all going through. Uh, you know, it's we life comes and there are phases and stages in life uh, right now you know they we have to live with coronavirus and we have to adapt and change to it and that's just like the process of life and some people were introverts they were comfortable in living in 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 their spaces in their houses by themselves and then walk out and go out sometimes and not all the time and that was their way of life and in a way they can now today say yeah what this is the very <laughs> uh, I think it's just a, a natural process of life uh, and I think it, th- this style is not new others have done it before and I think as viewers get used to this uh, format of storytelling, um, they're going to be so comfortable with it. Uh, and, and, you know, it's a process. Um, and I'm just happy that it got good reaction uh, and, and feedback. And even the people who hate it, they still watch it. The most interesting thing, I'll tell you about it, this excites me. It was people on Twitter when it was playing on TV. They were criticizing almost everything about it. And I'm like, but dudes, you're watching. You're staying there and you're watching and you have options. Just leave. You, you hate it. That leave. much. Yeah. <laughs> it's the way of life, like you say, man. It's crazy. <laughs> and, you know, it's like, uh, I'm, I'm just glad that you sit there. And I, you, don't, you don't have to like it. Mm. Um, and I don't think, I think as artists, we sometimes are oversensitive. Mm. We, we expect everyone to like what we do. Mm. It's, it's impossible, mm. but also it's, it's unfair. Yeah. Uh, you, because there's people with different tastes. And there's, I, I like a BMW versus a, a Golf, you know, yeah. a VW. That's my choice. I've got my reasons. I'm not going to expect people who don't like BMW and say this. And, but, you know, and, and I don't know why we think that should happen with the product. Mm. And, and, and I, you know, you just have, we just have to develop a thick scheme and says, yo, they don't like your shit. That's okay. Mm. There are people that like your shit. And mm. sometimes you do stuff for people who like it, mm. you know, and create your, your audience and create your base and grow from there. And once you've done that, others will come onto it. The, the sad reality, though, is that on TV, if you, if you don't get those numbers, you might not have another opportunity. opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same thing as in radio, you know? Yeah. You know? It's about the numbers. You know? what, what I liked about um, just watching your video, I noticed that you're very intentional in everything that you do. Uh, yeah. And there were a lot of subtle, correct me if I'm wrong, but there were a lot of subtle political statements in, in the series as well. Just run me through those. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you about the opening lines. They're, they're saying, we, we are united as one. We are here to fight for what's ours. Even there are some, those amongst us who are meant to be our protectors, but who are against us. You, you can read a lot into it, but I think the most important thing is that there are people who are in positions who are meant to make things for us as artists, as black people, uh, to use these platforms. But they are the very same people who make your life difficult uh, to be on those platforms. So the people who are supposed to help you tend to be your enemies Mm. and they tend to fight you more than your enemies. Mm. But there's also a statement where I said, if they want to be like us, they must leave the comfort of their houses and feel their pain. It was mainly referring to uh, people who are not for the culture, who like an idea of a culture when they see it 
and they will then try and mimic it, but they would not want to be in the culture and leave the culture. Mm. Uh, so, you know, they'll be like, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You find a lot of us who, uh, for an example, who are now living in, in, uh, in, in suburbs and yeah. we, uh, we like, yeah, me, I'm rude and we act like rude, but we will never take our time off to go and chill in the hood. Mm. And, uh, but we pretend like we are that. We are fakers, basically. Mm. And, but we don't, we like the idea, the sexiness of it, but we uh, cannot bear the pain of being in that world. And, and, and that's one, that's one political statement. And I'll tell you about the evidently, obviously political one, where there's a scene of um, a, a girl who's going to school and the mother is reading a, a newspaper and she's like, oh, you guys are banning schools again. And she's like, yeah, because you know, um, they're not, they don't want to give us what we want. Now think about it. Banning school is never a great idea. It's wrong by all means. But now once you've explored every other possible way, you lose your mind and I don't think it's also fair to expect people who are not being acknowledged and are not being engaged to think rationally. They have to do something irrational to get other people's attention. And then she says in that thing, but by the way, we saw this thing from you guys in 76 when yes. you were parents, mm -hmm. you were fighting apartheid government. And she goes, yeah, but that was the apartheid government. And she goes, yeah, but what's the difference with apartheid government than now? We have ministers who are driving in fancy cars, who their kids are going to private, private schools. schools and they all have medical aid, but we are stuck in this squalor. And how is that normal society? Yes, we are acting no abnormal by banning what it's supposed to benefit us, but that's because we don't live in a normal society. And I think that's a big political statement. And, 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 and that's a position of a lot of people who are forgotten, who are living in squalors. Because when you've got nothing, it's like now what's going on, we've been seeing it in Cape Town, when people are now breaking into uh, shops and are stealing food and other things. And when you are unemployed and you're locked in a house and you are hungry, and three, uh, two streets down your house, there's a shop and you can see the food in there. Are you gonna just die no. from hunger? No. Or are you gonna break into that shop and get that food? Mm. And you know it's wrong, but it's survival. It's survival. Ultimately, it's survival. That's the key thing. It's like, it's survival. And, and then you have the people that are showing off with their Gucci bags and their expensive alcohols. These are the very same people who are supposed to be the people who look after you. And they are telling you that, no, what you're doing is wrong. But they're not there at night when you are hungry. They're not there when your kid falls pregnant because, you know, a, a, a sugar daddy promised them that they're going to buy them food and they're going to take them to school. Uh, you have to deal with that stuff. They are not there. And who are they to just then judge you and then tell you how you must behave when they are not faced? And I, you know, of course it's wrong, but there are there comes a times when wrong and right are blurred mm. or are very blurry. You know, mm. the, the the lines are blurred. You know. So tell me, what's the what's the future plan for Javijo? Are we having a season two? Please tell me yes. We are going into production sometimes later this year. And uh, I almost told you, but uh, we are going big, man. Nice. We, are, we are going big. And, and I think um, the, the intention is, is uh, you know, you know we, we shot, there's another season that's coming on Netflix now. We shot um, season one and season two back to back. Season one was almost like a, an exhibition of some sort um, where we were showcasing what we can do artistically and so on. And season two, um, we were very angry. We were trying to reflect the times. And you remember three years ago, it was when we had uh, a lot of savings delivery protests and there was mm. a lot of violence. Mm. 
Mm. And uh, we sort of have a lot of violence in the coming to Richard because people are fighting against each other. Mm. And season three, um, it's where we're going to try and go commercial because we think we've done what we have done. Set out to do. Um, yeah, set out to do. So there's no point to prove now. And um, now we want to turn a product which was meant to be an experimental product into a commercial product. And, uh, and we're going to do those, those conventional stories now. You're going to see a boy meet a girl, <laughs> and a girl is hit by a car, and the boy wants to fuck up the guys who eat this girl. And, uh, <laughs> I just hope that I'm featured uh, on season three. Like <laughs> You must come through, my guy. We must come through. We 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 love it when we 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 get our people participating into it because one of the things that we've been meaning to do with Jericho is that we want um it to be owned by the people. Mm. Can you imagine if you come in for one minute there? You're gonna talk about it. You're gonna be like, "Yo, man, I was there. I did my thing, mm. and you gotta you gotta watch me. You gotta yeah. watch me." But it's also. It's also, we, we think we want it to be like an intersection. This yeah. is where all worlds must interact and come together. How was it working with Peter? Because he's a, he's a great, he's a legend, man. <laughs> Listen, he, 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 besides just working with him, this is what most people don't know. That guy saved our ass. Oh, really? In many ways. Yeah, yeah, Oskido. Yeah, there were times, remember, this is a self-funded project. Mm. There were times where we were like having a, a, a tough time. And then he would come in, which is keep on my view. When's I got that? I just want to sign up. And then, you know, and he's our guy, man. He's, you know, he's a great believer into the idea of Joe Richo. He, uh, he won't like me saying this, but he also didn't like the story. He was like, but he's still team. Like, when's I got that? That sounds like him. <laughs> My man, what's going on here? Yeah. But, you, but I'll also admit, and I'll give him credit for it, even though he didn't agree and he didn't see the story, he was like, these guys are trying something new. Mm-hmm. And I like that. Mm-hmm. I like the idea that they're trying to do something new and we must support new things. Mm-hmm. And that has been his way of doing things, you know? Mm-hmm. He's like... We can't keep doing things the same way. And mm. he liked, he also liked the idea that we were owning the product. You know, Jovich is owned by us, it's, you know, because we put in our, our money. How does the Netflix deal happen then? Like business-wise, do they give you a budget or they pay to own the stuff or what happens? It's a, it's a license. So they get to play, they get to have it on their platform for uh, about two years. Mm. And mm. yeah, and, that's, and they pay for that. Mm. Uh, and then if somebody else wants to have it for whatever mm. time they will pay for it and um, yeah and, 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 we, and we still, yeah you think no no go ahead you say we'll say we still haven't made our money back though <laughs> <laughs> no trust me after this episode you will my chillers will yeah, come but, through <laughs> oh, yeah, sure, um, so i just Thanks wanted to for the well wishes. yeah um i just wanted to ask as a filmmaker how have you taken the COVID-19 uh, pandemic? Because it's affected a lot of the industries and I'm sure it's yours as well. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of uncertainties and un- un- uncertainty brings about stress. But it also, uh, I must say I strive in situations like these because I, I, work, I work outside of the box and outside of the system. So I, I find ways of how do I seize this opportunity? And, you know, of course, I won't say what my plans are, but uh, to me, it's like, this is a new way of doing things. Uh, where do you see opportunities? And I see a lot of them. Um, and, but uh, uncertainties make me nervous and they bring about stress. Uh, but also, I've been working for the last four or five years nonstop, you know? So this is like, um, it has allowed me to replenish uh, think uh, again, take a moment and think about life differently. And I, I just like the idea that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm at home most of the time. 
and I'm writing and I think about stuff, I plan. And it's like, uh, it's not even a break to me because now we're planning the next season of Chavicha. So I think about ideas uh, mm -hmm. without distraction. Mm -hmm. So, which is why I love it. It's like, I'm at home, I've got nothing. I can stay in bed for the whole day on my phone and thinking about ideas. You know, time is money. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we are unable to pay for our own time. And now you are forced to have time. Mm -hmm. And you now, it's an opportunity to think about ideas. Yeah. yeah. That's it. And, and I think, you know, and I don't, I don't mean it's a great time, but I mean, it, 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 I seize the opportunity. Yeah. Listen, man, Vincent, it's been an honor to chat to you. I mean, I really, really look up to you. Uh, like I said, yeah. from one creative to another, man, you self-taught. I love the way that you're conventional about the way you do things and you stick to your guns no matter what anybody's saying, which is a trait that I think a lot of creatives should have. And I wish you yeah. all the best with everything that you're going to be doing, man. But just in closing... Uh, what advice do you want to give young um, aspiring filmmakers out there? Because I know they follow every interview that you do and all your moves. You know, man, the advice is, uh, I think the, the key thing that I, I suffered from it uh, as well as a young person is I didn't invest enough in self-belief. And I think it's important that sometimes you must shut the world and just think about you and how great you are and and then follow up on that belief and no matter what people say because out there there's cool guys like mac g who's <laughs> gonna have their own podcast and they're gonna have the good girls and they're gonna go to plenty nice clubs and they're gonna drive beautiful cars and you're not gonna have those things and your ego will take a knock and your self-belief will take a knock. But when you invest in it much earlier in your years, it doesn't matter what MacG drives, you still believe or Oscar and your time will come. And I think that's the foundation of a lot of things. And from mm. there, there's very little that's gonna shake you. That's what I would say to people. Fuck, man, Vincent, I feel like you're like my spirit animal, man. You're like one of those guys at a bri I'd chill all night with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why. <what I'm... laughs> but I hear your problems. I, I hear you have problems. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> Vincent, thank you so, so much, man. It's a pleasure, guys. It's a pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you for having me on and good luck with your stuff, man. It's a beautiful thing. I like the independent spirit. I like getting out there and doing your thing. We can't wait for no one, for no institution. We have to try. You started this thing much earlier than most people did it. You were ahead of our time with this thing, you know? And I, I, I wish you well. And, and you know why? That's why I'm not even doubting you when you say you want to be on Jovita. It's like, I want you because I need that spirit. Mm -hmm. I need that fucking spirit in you to put in our mix of Jovita mm -hmm. because we need that energy in there somewhere, you know? Wow, man. This is amazing. Thank you so much, Vincent. All the best. And where can people follow you? I know, you, I know you're not very big on social media and stuff. But yeah, yeah, no, I'm not, man. Yeah. And, people want to follow you. It's it's Vincent Molloy or everywhere else, you know, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram. It's just uh, Vincent Molloy, one word. Yeah. 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 But w w where where you you will find me? It's on the street, man. Yeah. <laughs> Old school. <laughs> Old school. <bro. laughs> Vincent, thank you so much, bro. That's why, my G. Thank you, my guy. Sweet. Lovely. A few moments later. And the process of an artist which I think is, is great because we lose that, you know? And the platforms that we have now is people trying to be cool, uh, uh, not even trying to be cool, pretending to be cool and believing in the illusion. Mm -hmm. It's amazing that we are the people that create the illusion and we end up believing in the lie that we are creating. We know <laughs> it's a lie, but we believe it. <laughs> it's like the psyche of it does, does, doesn't make sense, does it? Yeah. Yeah, and, and for me, it wasn't even about that, man. I just watched that. I'm like, this guy, the way this guy thinks, I have to talk to him. I have to. There's no way.
well, when I see what you do, and I think this is important, uh, you know, I read a lot more into it. It might not be your intention, but it is what you're doing. Uh, whether consciously or subconsciously, you are such an important platform that we need, you know, uh, because then, you know, you don't have a script there. You don't have a producer shouting in your ear to say, hey, do it like this, do it like that. We need to talk about this because we need to get the numbers, da, da, da. You know the whole bullshit. You yeah, know? Yeah, uh, yeah. And you, you know, you go to clubs, you mm. know the, the fakeness that exists there. Yeah. You've been part of it. You've been one yourself mm -hmm. where you pretended like you've got the dough, you've got the money, mm -hmm. and you walk in there and you buy that expensive alcohol. But you know it's killing your pocket. Mm. But you're so drunk in the lie mm. that you are just like end up being a victim of the very same lie. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like you 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 find people on TV who are acting like who are, who are acting like they are they are well off on TV, and when they leave uh, set and they go out into the public eye, they again put themselves into debt and buy expensive clothes and da da da. Because now they have to continue pretending. Living like the facade. They are mm. And it just doesn't make sense because you know you are creating an illusion. Why mm. do you now yourself believe in the illusion? <laughs> and, and, you know, just like, I don't, I don't understand that concept. And, but which is why I say if your foundation is strong, mm. it helps. Yes. Because these things don't shake you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Of course, they, of course, you know, now and again, you get a knock from them, but you, you remain firm because you know who you are and what you are about. You know, mm. we, we, took, we took our own money and our own savings. We put them on your vision. You know, it's not cheap to produce a drama series. It's mm. millions of rand, a mm. lot of money. I drive a shit car. <laughs> I could have believed that I'm the cool guy and I could have gone and bought a BMW. But instead, I thought, fuck let me invest it in this mm. because this is important mm. and it might create wealth and might, and I'll, be, I'll, I'll have an opportunity to say something worthwhile where I can tell the broadcaster that, you know, I'm not going to do it your way. I'm going to do it my way because I know my way and I believe in my way, not in a formula that some consultant has given you. And now you have to follow up that formula, despite the fact that it ha it's not working. Um, so, you know, it, it's a battle and we don't have all the answers, but, you know, we got to try, yeah. which is why I, I admire what you're doing, man. Cool. Thank you so much, Vincent. Take care, my brother. Thank you, man. All right. Love see you. Cheers. Cheers. Stop. For more information, visit www.workbox.co.za. Podcast and chill. Matt G, the ghost lady, and Len Moleko.